The following podcast is brought to you and would not exist without Effort of Performing Arts Center. Please, if you can, make a donation today at effortofperformingartscenter.com. Theater cannot exist without an audience, and EPAC cannot survive without the continued goodwill and generosity of supporters like you. Thank you for helping EPAC continue to provide diverse, thought-provoking theater that matters. And Goofy Podcast. Hello. This is Kevin Fennell. Uh, I'm doing the introduction for the first Effort Up Performing Arts Center podcast, the EPAC cast, uh, where I interviewed, along with my partner Josh Kerwin, interviewed Nick Smith, who's going to be in the upcoming show Cabaret at EPAC. He's going to be playing the MC. We had a fun conversation. Uh, First, we talked about the MC, Joel Gray playing in Mount Coming, and John Stamos, and then we talked about how he auditioned for the show, and we talked a little bit about how he started doing theater. And it was a fun conversation. We just had a goofy time. We were <laughs> backstage for the show. Yeah, at one point, you can hear them singing upstairs. It's, it's a good time, so remember that Cabaret is opening on... October 16th at 7.30 p.m. at EPAC, and definitely check it out. So hopefully you enjoy our first podcast. This one's gonna be a hit! Official episode of the EPAC podcast for Effort Performing Arts Center. I'm uh, one of your hosts, Kevin Fennell. My name is Josh Kerwin. As our other host. And uh, we're here with our special guest, Bill Goman. Do you get it? Because we're doing cabaret. Absolutely. Uh, we're here with uh, Nick Smith. Nick Hello. Smith. Yes. That's him right there. That's He's going to be playing the uh, MC in cabaret. Yeah. We are backstage right now. There are very, very attractive women in slutty outfits <laughs> very it's so, fantastic so i mean that's i mean that's what i'm looking forward to right there I mean, that's is, that's worth the price of admission right there i i would say i would say yeah yes. so nick you're playing the mc i am yep uh, i don't know the show okay like, at all i'm i still yep. know i haven't seen the show either josh doesn't know it that well i mean i know the people that played it mm. I and mean, joel gray was a cool guy mm-hmm. he was an mm-hmm. episode of buffy yep uh, John John Stamos also played. John Stamos yeah, was the MC. Um, Michael C. Hall from Dexter. Yeah. Um, currently, Alan Cumming. Yeah. yeah. He's playing yeah. the MC. He's the one that did it really well, right? Yeah. Yeah. And he did he it a long time ago, too. Yeah. And then he, like, he yeah. doing it again. Doing it again. Yeah. Right I saw now. the movie Loser, mm-hmm. where they, they second act the cabaret, and Alan Cumming is in it. Has, there you go. And that's my knowledge of cabaret. And it's in the music. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, what do you think of that, the part? Um, it's interesting. It's it's definitely interesting. It starts out, you know, 1930s Berlin, Germany, the time of, um, it's just more like a celebration at the beginning where the MC is in charge of basically the cabaret and everything that goes on there. So he, um, he runs the show basically, and it, it starts it, it very very much as like a light-hearted start to the show Kind of gets you. I think the audience relaxed, you know with the Vilkeman number um, and as the show progresses it gets more um, You know the Nazis it shows that that, that whole time time period where it, it it starts to get real and you can kind of see um, where you know it would have started lighter and as the show is going on you know spoiler alert it doesn't end well you know, for, oh, for World War II? Did, oh it doesn't end well for Germany? No, no it, 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 it doesn't pan out too well. Oh, man. Um, man there's fourth graders that are halfway through that chapter. I know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They're going to be really disappointed. So um, yeah so you know you have to you have to play that lightheartedness the beginning keep it keep it playful throughout 
but then it definitely is a character, a switch, more like mm -hmm. around intermission, act, end of act one, act two, it's just, it's kind of like a best of both worlds kind of thing. It's, you get to play comedy and then the drama yeah. hits, so. I've heard that there, that at times there's been a, a couple major uh, differences in concepts yes. of the, the MC. Um, yeah. And uh, tell me a little bit about that. Um, I've done a little bit of research. I mean, you can YouTube anything. Uh, previous previous <laughs> cabaret <laughs> cabaret um, MCs and and see a lot of really great examples. You know how to do it, and there's a lot of different ones that are like, whoa, how not to do it. You know, which is which is important to know. Oh yeah, you know, just as important to know. Um, but so many different concepts on the idea. I mean, you have guys like Alan Cumming, or let's start with Joel Gray, yeah. who's in the Tux. And that whole idea, um, just like classy. I, I don't know if classy is the right word, but mm -hmm. it's certainly like androgynous, right? Yeah, kind of like dark, creepy, a little yeah. slimy almost. Okay. Um, where you see it now is like, you know, the outfit in the beginning, for example, is the black pants, the black shorts basically cut off. And there's suspenders there where there would be a tuxedo, which is what Joel Gray was wearing, yeah. but it's like a deconstructed tux. He's shirtless. It's just a lot dirtier. That's where that's where we kind of see cabaret now, I think, is the main concept. Mm -hmm. There is a there's an um, an English production like over in London right now where they kinda kind of stuck more with the Joel Gray, the original, he's kind of mm -hmm. in a tux, that kind of style. Mm -hmm. But the newer one is is the one we're gonna be going with, the uh, the ninety eight reprise so right. much more stylized yes yeah, yeah, yeah cool. definitely more stylized that's awesome yeah for sure and um i think ours maybe centers more around sally and um cliff's storyline and also um trish corker and, and gene ellis's characters it, it definitely sticks more with theirs um compared to like the original movie was more just MC and Sally maybe. It's, yeah. It really much it really looks at those relationships more. So cool. We gotta take a, a little break. Awesome. Video right there. What good is sitting alone in your room? Come hear the music play. Come see Cabaret Old Chum at Ephrata Performing Arts Center. It opens on October 16th at 7.30 p.m. and continues its run for the next three weekends. For more information, including purchasing tickets, go to EphrataPerformingArtsCenter.com. Yes, we are. Sound effects. That was. Whoa. I used a little button to make that. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, Talking about cabaret. Yeah, mm -hmm. with Nick Smith, the MC. Uh, yes. Mm. Or talk about like uh, your audition process. Did you uh, audition a bunch of times? Uh, there was there were a few callbacks yeah. included. Yeah. How did you uh, approach the idea of playing? Did you, did you want the MC? Was that the part you came to auditions for? Originally, I, I wasn't really thinking about Cabaret. I told myself yeah. um, a while ago I wasn't going to do any fall shows anymore. It's just <laughs> it's a bad time with baseball playoffs and football yeah. starting up. I hate, I hate it. It's a yeah. bad time. It's just <laughs> not a good time. But, um, so I, will start in five hours. I know. <laughs> which I'm not going to get a chance to yeah. see. You know, yeah. which, it's a sacrifice you have to make. Yeah, I guess. And it was a break. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I, I originally wasn't thinking of it mainly with that. In mind and just uh, I just maybe didn't think it was something I'd be interested in or whatever um, be a, a good candidate for but uh, Eddie and I talked a little bit about it he said why don't you just come to a callback to an audition rather and just you know just give it a go and see what you think and there's a group of us and uh, I'm here today yeah. as you know that's awesome yeah that's cool. that's so cool that you can like I always, I have to hone in on what I think I'm going to be mm -hmm. and what I want to be. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I think it's part of my like get your, uh, get yourself a little bit. It's my audition right. process. Like I need, like this, I'm going for this part. Mm -hmm. If I get something else, maybe I'll take it. But like this is the part I hone in on. Mm -hmm. That's just me. Though. I don't, like, mm -hmm. Josh. I don't know what you do. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, that, I mean that that ends up being unless it's like for something that I that it's like 
like it's a, it's like something that somebody wrote that I've met or something like that mm-hmm. like yeah. by audition and I'm just like I I don't know I mean I don't like but you know with EPAC you're 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 playing shows that like you know there's there's iconic characters and things like yeah. that that you're able to play which is yeah. something that's really great yeah about this theater yeah. so and to do it in a place like this is fun yeah I think this is yeah. such a cool like, beautiful just, room yeah. that stage you know, it's I, just I, fun I yeah it's just fun to be on to play yeah. on yeah. Absolutely. For sure. Is this going to be like interactive? I mean, you you have to go up in the uh, business, right? Say that one more time. You have to go up in the audience business. Yeah, in yeah. Life. Which is it's also another <laughs> yeah. like huge fear of mine. I told oh, yeah. Ed, I told Ed, it's like um, my worst nightmare, basically. Right? Breaking the fourth wall. Yeah, like the oh, really? the the intro um, act two. We start with um, I kind of scout the audience. I look through and I have to pick out two audience members each night do like a little joke with them basically slow dance with them ask them questions you know ask them how their night's going ask them what they think of the show so uh that's so that's that's so cool um yeah i'm a little nervous but uh (laughs) that's gonna be a ball that's gonna be great i think you're gonna enjoy it so much more than you think yeah yeah. so far in rehearsals it's been good they've been uh we have like cast members sitting in the front row and yeah. we'll, we'll have like practice rounds basically it's like role playing almost uh and they'll they'll <laughs> come up with some interesting scenarios for me so hopefully i'm ready for anything when this show actually uh, gets going when i was in uh, yeah. midsummer when i was in college i used to as bottom i used to i used to always point at a girl in one of the rows and flirt with her yeah it's like i was fake acting like be like, like doing my bad acting <laughs> and so i always change my blocking each night as i tried to find a girl with my during when other people were talking <laughs> that's one of my favorite things to do i mean come on there you give, go give me a chance <laughs> 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 I will never tell my audience to one person. I'll do it. There you go. I mean, yeah, it's fun to go to the audience. It's, good. Yeah. it's goofy. It's, yeah, that's why definitely. I love this this space. It's, just, it's so close. It is. Like, it's very intimate, know. and uh, <laughs> it should make for uh, an interesting experience for sure. For sure. Yeah. Each night. Yeah. So, uh, so Nick, uh, what was your first play or musical? That you were ever in, and what what part did you play? What yeah. brought you into the theater world? I was a junior at Donegal High School in 2003, mm-hmm. and I I had <laughs> wanted always to to do a musical and to do it, but I was very uh, very shy about the audition process, and I never really sang for anybody. I was like, this is. I don't know if this is mm-hmm. for me, but Donegal had always done really, really awesome productions. So, yeah, they were great. So um, I was at a girls' basketball game. Nice. I remember it very well, which I would normally not even be caught at a girls' basketball game. I uh, gravitate towards that. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> um, and they were doing Carousel at the time, and I had some buddies come in. Uh, Tim Monahan, I remember. Um, Jimmy Everly came into the the gym and they were like dude we need guys some guys dropped out you don't have to audition you want to do it and i was like okay let's 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 do it and i was in the ensemble and i was a uh, a ruffian in one of the dance numbers so it was uh, that was my big debut you had sang before um no, no like i had like not they just they just stuff. no that was yeah. it they threw me in and that was it and then the next year they did um, a fall musical, Godspell. I auditioned for that, and um, that's just how it, that just just took off after that. Got hooked. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. For that's sure. why, that's how that's where I got the bug as well. Yeah, with Donegal. Yeah, it's, uh, Little Shop of Horrors. Yes. Yeah, it was. Uh, yep, Jim. Yeah, he, he gets uh, he gets people wrapped in. Yeah, for sure. He's a good guy. Yeah, but um. But yeah, that's a, that's cool. So 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 you started doing doing more acting, and then mm-hmm. what uh, what brought you to EPAC? Jim Johnson, actually. Yeah. Um, he said, you know, this theater does really awesome things, and um, would be a really good step for for me to go into a really good direction. So um, mm-hmm. so I auditioned for the two thousand and four season, I believe. Um, and I was in the ensemble for Sweet Charity back in 2004. That Very was my cool. first show. Very cool. So, yeah. So, uh, on that note, then, uh, so, so, you know, bounce off a couple of, uh, a co- what, what, how many, how many shows have you been in yeah. at EPAC, really? Oh, man. Jeez. 
probably at least 10, I would think by now. 10? Yeah. That's fantastic. Jeez, yeah, it's crazy. Awesome. It's crazy. Yeah. Crazy any, uh, any, any high points for you? Other than the MC, of course. I mean, this is, uh, this is great. This is great. This is great. It's, it's, it is pretty awesome. Um, I think back to, we had a blast when we did the producers in 2009, I believe, uh, getting a chance to play Leo Bloom, who was uh, mm -hmm. Matthew Broderick and, mm -hmm. and uh, Gene Wilder, Gene Wilder and uh, yes. playing opposite I Ed. Movie with him yesterday. Yeah. Oh my God. Gene Wilder played Billy Vivid in Cuckoo's Nest. Yeah. One of the originals there, you the there you go. Really? No kidding. Yeah, connection right there. There you go. There you go. I, uh, um, what did it, was that, it was everything you've always wanted to know about sex, but were too afraid to ask. Okay. Have you ever seen that movie before? No. It's a Woody Allen movie. No. And um, he said it's like a bunch of sketches, and the, his sketches, what is sodomy? <laughs> and that's. I was just saying, he falls in love with a sheep. It's uh yeah. But anyway, so <laughs> yeah, we're not done yeah. here. But Leo Bloom's a Leo Bloom's a great character. It was a great that's character. a that's pretty fantastic. That was a lot of fun to do. And yeah. um we did rent, I believe, in two thousand and ten. Oh and right. played uh, Mark Cohen in that and very cool. That was a great opportunity as well. <laughs> um yeah. I actually met my wife during that time. Boom. So worked yeah, out. That's really why well. you do theater. That's yeah, the that's, that's, that's the part. That's the part you didn't say about in high school, which is where guys like, oh, meet some girls. There's, there's five girls and five guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. all the football players are together, and they're all dudes. <laughs> this is ninety girls and five guys. Yeah. It is a it is, you know, the odds are in your sure. favor. <laughs> <laughs> EPAC is proud to once again present the Dave Stahl Big Band in a tenor sax panorama or November 6th at 7.30 at EPAC's Sheridan Bigler Theater. Dave Stahl has performed with legends Frank Sinatra, Ella Fitzgerald, Tony Bennett, Mel Torme, Jack Jones, Sarah Vaughn, and Engelbert Humperdinck. Sugar Arts Institute at Donnaker's will be providing dessert and coffee during intermission. Tickets for this concert event are $15 and are available online at effortofperformingartscenter.com. All right, and we're back again with Nick Smith. I'm Kevin Pennell. I'm Josh Kerwin. He's good when I point out. Oh, I'm just nervous to say his name. I know. It's so impressive. But uh, we're here night, now. We're ready, we're ready to start for the first time officially the epic quest of EPAC. <laughs> that was interesting. That was, that was, I, I'm, I'm, yeah, it's okay, I'm here till Thursday. So the whole, whole idea of this is that we're going to play some games with Nick here to just goof around because it's fun to goof around, especially since Nick's probably supposed to be on stage right now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can so, hear, hear them Nick, rehearsing right now. Yeah, <laughs> you can probably hear them saying, whoops, singing that whole song about welcome. And uh, so what Nick's going to be doing, he's going to be playing for somebody out there that's listening. All right. He's going to try to get some prizes. And that person this week is going to be... Danielle Fisher! Yeah, so congratulations to that person. They're going to be playing for this. The first game we're going to be playing is called Epactagories. Which, uh, if they win, they get a signed poster of Cabaret by the cast. Mm -hmm. Just pick it up, you win. Yep, fantastic. Now the, uh, the rules of this game, basically what we're going to do is I'm going to give uh, Nick and Kevin... I'm going to give them both a uh, basically a subject, and they're going to banter off uh, exactly what those those things would be like. For example, if I would say fruits, they would name you know apples, bananas, blah 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 blah. So whoever runs out of ideas of ideas first basically loses. So if Nick wins, then we're going to give our uh, signed poster to, and. Uh, if Kevin wins, then uh, nobody wins. Then no bueno. Anything. No bueno. No bueno. Every exactly. Party has a pooper. Yep. <laughs> That's why. That's why we invite right Kevin. Here. Exactly. Awesome. <laughs> it's an okay. epic quest. It's not an easy quest. Okay. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. So I'm going to give you guys the subject right now. Okay. The epactagory is German-made products. German-made products. Okay. 
I got one. All right. He's got one. Brand names. Oh, brand names. Brand names. Okay. Mm-hmm. I got one. Okay. And brand names. Kevin, go. Heineken. Porsche. Uh, Volkswagen. <sighs> okay. Oh gosh. Um. Volkswagen was mine too. <laughs> okay. And oh. three. Oh, give oh, me more time. <laughs> German vehicles. German, German vehicles. I'm out of <laughs> or it could be uh, drinks, <laughs> anything like that. Um, I got nothing, guys. Oh. I got nothing. Oh. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm oh, sorry. Hey, you know what? No, that's okay. Kevin okay. wins. Okay, Everybody. unfortunately, Everybody yeah. stop. Now, Kevin now, wins. mind you, there is still going to be that signed poster that is going to be available by raffle. Yes. Yeah. During the uh, during when you come to see the show, so still pick sorry. up a raffle. So we're sorry get that too. Poster. Danielle Fisher. For not winning this first quest of EPAC. But you know what? However, it's still on the table. Yeah, so you still get it. Get that raffle. Sorry. Hey, it's okay. Hey. It's okay. That's all. I would have said Fanta. Fanta. I said, or no, no, no. It's, it's not. Is it? Is it Fanta? It's a yeah. Fanta. Fanta, whatever it is, yeah. But uh, I believe Fanta? they um, that was actually uh, Fanta. I believe they made it in like during World War II, yeah. because they couldn't get Coca Cola from America. At That's the time. Germans, boy. That was actually the that was the, the only one that I thought of. I they didn't even think it's like car company. Yeah. Yeah. And we're gonna take a little break, and then we're coming back with the second epic quest of EPAC. Coming up next on the main stage, EPAC is happy to present Annie, one of the world's best loved musicals. Annie includes such unforgettable songs as It's the Hard Knock Life, Easy Street, I Don't Need Anything But You, and of course, the popular Tomorrow. This joyous show magically sustains a perfect balance by being sophisticated enough for adults to enjoy while presenting a story that is tremendously appealing to the youngsters and to the youngster in each of us. Heartwarming and funny, Annie provides the ideal finale to our 2014 season. Forget about tomorrow, buy your tickets today at EffortOfPerformingArtsCenter.com. And once again, we are back. I'm Kevin Bell. I'm Josh Kerwin. I'm Nick Smith. That's right! Yeah! And we're ready, we're back here for the second epic quest of EPAC. <laughs> Definitely better than the first time. It's yeah, I think it's definitely. It's, yeah, getting it's, it's getting better. It's, it's a work in progress, people. Yeah. This is our first official episode. Get off our backs. <laughs> anyway, so for our second epic quest of EPAC, this little game called How Far in Miles is This Place from EPAC, where we are sitting right now underneath the stage. All right, are you ready? You have to be within 100 miles. All right? Within 100 miles. Within 100 miles. Okay. And if you get this take. right, Okay. Yeah, give or take give 100. Or take. Yeah, 100. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And within 100 miles, okay. to where we are sitting. And if you win this mm -hmm. for Danielle Fisher, that person will get the chance to take a picture with any cast member in costume. I mean, could be full cast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It could awesome. be full cast, maybe. Awesome. Depends on how generous. I mean, hey. Get a picture of Nick Smith as the MC. Yeah. Mm. I mean, like I said, a lot of chicks in slutty clothes. <laughs> I mean, I'm just you saying, know. Hey, people out the people. Guys, girls, hey, anybody wants this teach, picture. Teach right. their own. Right. Exactly. All right. So, Nick Smith. Yeah. How many miles from EPAC where we sit is the Rock, of, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in Cleveland, Ohio? Okay. Cleveland, Ohio. I was hoping you would say like Wawa. Something. Uh, <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm from Ohio. That's correct. Oh. That's smart. Oh, this is terrible. <laughs> this is terrible. Um, within a hundred miles, Cleveland's like a five-hour drive. I'm thinking. So let's go with. Let's go 450. 450? Yes. 358 miles. With oh, oh, nice. 92 nice. off. Nice. Hey, you got it. Nice. nice. 
Frankie's passing is passing. Yeah. Congratulations to Danielle Fisher. You have your chance to get a picture with any member of the cast in costume, possibly the whole cast. Hey, Miles is off. That's go. awesome. <laughs> Fantastic. Fantastic. That is our second epic quest of feedback. We'll be back once more after this. There will be a premiere stage reading of Countenance by Chet Williamson on November 8th at Ephrata Performing Arts Center. On the 100th anniversary of the start of the Great War, Countenance presents an unflinching look at how society welcomes the return of its fragile and damaged heroes. This is a wonderful opportunity to see a premiere reading of this theatrical work from a renowned writer, Chet Williamson. Tickets will be available at the door and online at EffortofPerformingArtsCenter.com. And we're back. And I, I want this huge. Are you okay. ready? Okay. Okay. For the third epic quest of EPAC. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh. That was professional. That was professional. Then you almost fell out of the seat. If only we had cameras in here. <laughs> oh my god, that was amazing. <laughs> so that was kids, so incredible. You and Josh almost fall down trying to sit in a chair. <laughs> First time doing that. <clears throat> well. All right. Any hoozle? I'm Kevin Fennell, that was Chad Kerwin. We're still here with Nick Smith. And we're ready, this is, this is the big one, all right? This gets a chance to win a free ticket to Cabaret. They already have a subscription, that's one more ticket. Bring somebody with you. We're not mad when more people show up. We know it's good. Yeah, big mm -hmm. fans, we're all actors here. Yeah. We, like, we like having people in the audience. Generally. It's crazy, mm -hmm. I don't know, it's nutty. All right, so this is this is the question about cabaret. All right, got it. The show you're little in. Little trivia for you. Little trivia. Little chill tri tri chills. So, cabaret yes. won the Tony for best musical in 1967. Yeah. It's gonna be a multiple choice question. Okay. What three musicals that year did they beat? You oh. A. Oh. Oh. A is it Mame, Skyscraper, Sweet Charity. No, I'm not making these up. <coughs> B is I do, I do, the apple tree, and walking and happy. C, the happy time, how now, Dow Jones, <laughs> and Elia Darling. And D is hair, Zorba, and promises, promises. Mm. The question should be, what is Epac doing, Zorba? <laughs> that's, 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 what is it and how do I get into it? You can repeat any of those. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's a lot of yeah. names of shows. That's a lot of names. Yeah. Um, you can have us repeat those. I mean, you got the ones I know. Uh, I mean, Hair <coughs> and Promises, Promises are the ones I know. Yeah. Sweet Charity. Which was B, correct? That's A. That's A. a. B is a, I Do, I Do, The Apple Tree, and Walking Happy. Don't walk sad, guys. Let's go with that one. You want to go with B? I think I'm going to lock that answer in. He's locking it in. I'm locking All right. it in. He did lock it in. That's right. B. Boom! I nice. got nice. I did oh. the apple tree and walking happy. It's that a lucky awesome. day for. That was awesome. Oh, <laughs> oh that didn't work. Out. Anyway, it's a lucky show. day for. Danielle Fisher. Yes! Yeah! You did it for them! Fantastic. So, job, so glad that I know my 1967 Broadway show. Yeah, it's it's nice. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Nailed it. Got it. That was awesome. Yeah. I'm so pumped. So they want a free ticket to the show. Yeah. Awesome. Exactly. That's fantastic. Well, guys, uh, I mean, let's talk about the shows coming up, obviously. It's, yeah. It's uh, the dates, of course, since I have that right at my back in the hall and I'm reading it. Not looking at things. <laughs> All right, the 16th is it opens, the 17th, 18th this weekend, and then the next two weekends. A lot of shows. There's a lot of shows. Yeah. Check out EffortPerformingArtsCenter.com for more information. Uh, Josh, you have any shows coming up for the Plums, his band? Uh, the Plums are going to be playing all kinds of shows coming up. You can uh, check out our dates that we have on the uh, Facebook page that we have as of now. Uh, we're going to be playing around Pittsburgh, Philadelphia. Sometimes in Lancaster, Harrisburg, and New York, so check them all out. Uh, Nick Smith, 
Thank you very much for Thank being here. Thank you guys here. for having me. I appreciate it. It was, it. It was yeah. a ball talking to you. I can't wait to go see the show. It's going to be yeah. so awesome. Yeah. I'll yeah. look for you in the audience. And, uh, I'll yeah. 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 You guys, so. yeah. I mean, you, I mean, you know. We'll accept lap dances, I guess. Okay. You know, yeah, whatever, you know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. There you go. I'll pull you out. Do you have anything else you want to say? You want to say hi to your, uh, your wife? Um, yeah, I'll say hi to Stacia, my wife, and our two dogs nice. back at home. I'm nice. sure we'll, we'll listen to this at some point and get a kick out of it. So, <laughs> yes. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> Four gigs. All right, and uh, finally, I'm Kevin Fennell. I'm Josh Kerwin. You can check me out on Twitter at Kevin underscore. Under thingy, Seamus, S E A L U S. Thanks so much for listening. Bye. Thank you for enjoying our podcast today. Please remember to make a donation to the Effort of Performing Arts Center. Together, we will achieve a lasting artistic legacy for future generations to cherish. Theater cannot exist without an audience, and EPAC cannot survive without the continued goodwill and generosity of supporters like you.